Well, today we're going to be looking at piecewise functions. A piecewise function is a function with uh, two or more parts to it. So you can see this function here has this little brace here, this brace like you have here in front of these functions. That is one way you know it's a piecewise function. Also, f of x doesn't have one rule, it has two rules. Now, as we look at these piecewise functions, uh, please do be aware that you do have two parts. This part over here is your function rule. This is the actual rule you're going to use on the function. These parts over here are your domain restrictions. I'll just abbreviate DR. Your domain restrictions tell you when to use the rule. So you have two different rules. One rule for three, the other rule for two, and then the domain restriction says use the rule for three if x is of three if x is less than or equal to zero. This one says use the rule of 2 if x is greater than 0. So that is how those domain restrictions work in a piecewise function. And that's uh, what allows it to be a function, the fact that these two lines don't go on forever, but they're restricted to a certain part of your domain. So if I have f of 2, well, first of all, you need to remember that y does equal f of x. You probably talked about that in Math 1 and Math 2. So the number inside this parenthesis is pretty much your x value. This negative, two, I'm sorry, this 2 is your x value. Now to determine which rule you use, you're going to want to say, okay, is this 2, is it less than 0 or is it greater than 0? Since 2 is greater than 0, I'm going to use this second rule. And uh, that means I'm going to be using this right here, this rule of 2. Now the rule part is 2, so my answer here is I just write down a 2. So whatever the rule is, write it down, and then you replace any of the x's in that rule. Now this rule here, the 2, did not have an x. The domain restriction had an x. The rule itself did not, so that's why I only wrote down a 2. Let's go ahead and uh, try another one of these problems. If I have uh, let's see, the next one is f of negative 4. So once again, I have a negative 4 here, and I need to figure out where I'm going to uh, put it in. So I'm going to have uh, negative 4 is less than 0, so I'm going to be using the top rule for this problem. For number 2, I'll be using the top rule. So if my top rule is negative 4, uh, I'm going to write down my rule as 3, since negative 4 is less than 0, I use the top rule. I write down a 3. I would like to replace an x with negative 4, but there is no x to replace. That's how these work. Uh, probably worth taking some time to look at one more of these. So if I am looking at the next one with uh, f of 0. f of 0, 0 is right on the line here. But if you notice, I still use the top rule because it is the top rule that x is less than or equal to 0. So I'm going to, uh, if it was anything bigger than 0, even 0 0.1, I would use the second rule. But I use the top rule, the first rule, since that does include the places where it equals 0. So that means my rule is the part over here. My rule is 3, so I just write down that this is equal to 3. Okay, hope that helps you understand how these basic ones work. Let's go ahead and try another one. On this next one, I have uh, g is equal to 7. Well, for g is equal to 7, I'm going to need to go ahead and uh, look at the rule for g. So I'm going to be looking at this equation here. Since it's a g instead of an f, I'm using the second piecewise function. And since this is a 7, I'm going to say, okay, is 7 less than 3 or is 7 greater than 3? 7 is greater than 3, so this is the part of the rule I'm going to be using, this part here, the 2x minus 1. This is the rule I use if x is greater than 3. So I'm going to put in a 2x minus 1, but instead of writing down an x, I'm going to replace an x with that value. Um, on the others, I did not have an x. Notice here I had no x, so I had nowhere to plug in my 2 or my negative 4 or my 0. On this one, I do have an x, so I can replace the x I did have over here with a 7, and it's best to put it in parentheses like that to avoid any mistakes with positives or negatives or fractions, things like that. So 2 times 7 is 14, minus 1 is 13, that is my final answer. To evaluate g of 0, uh, what I'll need to do is um, 
maybe look at zero and say, well, is zero less than three or greater than three? Since zero is less than three, I'm going to be using the first part of the rule, and I'm going to write down this rule, but instead of writing down the x, I'm going to replace it with the value they gave. Once again, since you had an x, I have a place to plug in this number. In equation f, you did not have an x, no place to plug in a number. G, you notice we do. So that's going to give me a value of 5. And that will show you how to do this one. If I have a negative 1 here on this one, um, that will give me an opportunity. If g is negative 1, I need to say, well, negative 1 is definitely less than 3. So I'm going to use this one again for g of negative 1. And if g is negative 1, I'm going to write down that rule, same rule I used last time, but this time I'm going to plug in a negative 1. So since there's a place to plug in a value for x, we will get different answers each time. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a few examples with f. I mean for h, I'm sorry. For h, I have h of negative 4. Well, I have two rules. Over here for h, I have this rule here where it's less than negative 2 and this one where it's greater than negative 2. It turns out negative 4 is less than negative 2. I have had some questions students have on that, but if you look on the number line, there would be negative 2. Negative 4 is to the left of negative 2, so anything to the left of negative 2 is less because less than or equal to negative 2 would be this part of the graph here would be going with my first rule. Negative 4 is definitely this, so I'm going to be using this one. So if I have a negative 4, that means I'll have a 1 half. Instead of writing my x, I'm going to put a parenthesis, and, and then I'll just write down my minus 4. Notice I copy down my 1 half and my minus 4 exactly, but my x I'm going to replace with the negative 4. That gives me 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2, minus 4 is negative 6 for your final answer. When I have number 10, this one is negative 2 exactly. So it's going to be right on the line. So if it's exactly negative 2, notice this is the part with the equal. So I'm using the same rule again. So it's going to be a 1 half. Replace that x in that equation with a parenthesis, minus 4. And then instead of plugging in the negative 4 like I did that last time, it's the same rule, but this time I plug in the negative 2. So 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Hopefully that will help you see how to do these. Uh, one more just to illustrate. Uh, negative 1, that one is going to be on the other side. So in this case I'm going to have a negative 1 is bigger than negative 2. You can see it's over here to the right of negative 2. So I'm going to be using this rule. I have 3 minus 2 times negative 1. Now it is important when you simplify that to realize a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's the same thing as 3 plus 2, which will give me a final answer of 5. So I hope this helps you understand uh, how to do some of these problems, and um, if you've got any other questions, feel free to contact me via Zoom or an email.